Hey, thanks all for being here. Uh, this will take just a minute or something. And uh, before we start, I think we are like, I'm, I think I, I can start. So, hello all, I'm Himanshu. And uh, I'm uh, working as a security researcher since last uh, 12 years. And uh, I'm a big fan of uh, CTF. So, any CTF person here who plays a lot of CTF? Woo! Yeah, CTF for the win. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, I know I'm I'm standing between you folks and the lunch time, but believe me, if you will stay here, I'll make this time worth, and uh, probably you will enjoy lunch even more. If in case my accent is very thick or something I'm saying uh, you can't understand, feel free to raise your hand and tell me, and I'll, I'll try my best to explain it or re-say it so that everyone understand. So I, I'm not native English speaker, so don't feel like I'm right. Uh, because, yeah, I'm always wrong. <laughs> and uh, if you feel like during the presentation anything is incorrect, feel free to tell me. Uh, maybe after the talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, thanks a lot for being here. Ooh, this walking. Yeah, this has happened to me a uh, few times before. So when I'm like super excited and super nervous, I just start speaking so fast. And if if the talk is for 45 minutes, I probably end up in like 20 minutes or something. So I'll, I'll try my best to be slow and descriptive because after the talk, I always feel like, oh no, I miss this, I miss that. I, I don't want that. So I gotta give you a formal introduction. First. So yeah, we're finally here. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Himanshu, I love the energy. I love the motivation. Welcome, sir. Uh, from what I understand, this is your first public talk as well. Is that correct? Uh, no, not really. So this is my second this year. I talked in the application this year. Beautiful. Before I have talked two times and uh, I exposed it. Okay, then that was my, my mistake. But awesome to have you here. Thank you so much. And yeah, so you're going to be talking about public cloud attacks, a summary of attacks seen by Cloud Intel, which I'm assuming is where you're working. So thank you for being here. No, not even. Okay. I got that wrong too. Beautiful. Enjoy the talk and <laughs> I'm doing good today. Huh? Uh, thank you. And yeah, be lunch after, but looking forward to it. Thank you. Thanks for the nice introduction. So uh, uh, Cloud Intel is, is something, uh, my personal project that I started almost a year back and I'll, I'll talk everything uh, while this talk proceeds. So cool. Uh, so this was supposed to be a joke, which I already have, you know, so maybe we can skip past it. All right. So, uh, who am I? I'm, I'm, I've recently started working for Seaside, uh, which is a very small company, like smaller than the smallest we are pre-seed company. So, uh, but we have a few products. So, uh, if, if you folks want to try it out, it's for web security. I play a lot of CTF. I play with Water Paddler and, uh, uh, I'm kind of professional who thinks red, but uh, behave uh, blue. So the the idea is like, uh, do the attack on your control environment, know everything about the attack, and using that attack, develop the detections, protection, so that you can protect your company, your customers, and maybe your family as well, because, you know, when uh, they might get infected. So this is us. A big shout out to my team. Uh, we were number one on CTF time. For those who don't know what CTF time is, it's like IMDB, but for CTF. So last year we were number one and I'm really proud of it, of my team. I'm shit. They are good. So, all right, cool. So the agenda of this talk, this talk is going to be about the story of Cloud Intel. I mentioned uh, this was my personal project that I started almost a year back. And uh, during multiple iterations of this thing, I come up with a uh, uh, with a learning and that's pretty much what I want to share with all of you folks so that uh, so that you folks can use the learning and implement it if you are in a corporate environment or you are managing something or if you're not managing something then maybe at home I don't know who maintains a cloud infrastructure for home but yeah uh, so I'm, I'm going to this is the agenda so I'm going to talk about the story of cloud intel key uh, milestones uh, and transition of the uh, transition of the Cloud Intel, how Cloud Intel moved from where it was last year and where we are 
right now. Then I'm going to do the comparative analysis between the past infrastructure and new infrastructure. Then I'm going to do some data analysis, the data pointers, what we saw in Cloud Intel. And uh, yeah, let's let's dive in. So overview of Cloud Intel. What is Cloud Intel? Uh, interestingly, during my uh, last 12 years, uh, what I have realized, uh, like cloud was very new when I started in this industry. And what I realized, the at first, uh, my understanding of cloud was like, it's like just any other infrastructure. But it is not. Uh, the traditional infrastructure and the cloud infrastructure, there are some changes, some attacks works on traditional infrastructure. But in cloud, the attack surface, the malware, the the way how attackers move laterally or how they achieve targets are, are completely different. And that's when I thought about, okay, cloud intelligence can be a separate thing in itself. And right now, if you look at the industry, everyone, like even it's free open source or paid products, no one is exactly talking about dedicated cloud intelligence. People are talking about intelligence on Windows, intelligence on IPs, intelligence on many different things, but no one is talking about cloud intelligence specifically and that's why I started this project. So threat intelligence on public cloud looks a lot different than on traditional network. So introduction to cloud intel. Uh, so uh, with my last experiences, what I realized the intelligence can be generated and what I mean is at the end, all the intelligence companies need some data points and using those data points, they do analysis on top of it. So example, uh, if there is an IP, what kind of connections, what are, uh, what IP, other IPs are making connections, what kind of exploits they are seeing and everything. Looking at all those things, what they do is they aggregate the content, they find out, okay, these are the known attackers, these are the scanners, these are the security companies and blah, blah, blah. And then they come up with the idea. Okay, one single request out of those, like once in few years come out to be zero day. And that's what they blog about. So this is what I'm trying to say that intelligence can be generated. It's time consuming thing, but it can be generated. And that essentially what I'm doing with Cloud Intel. So uh, in Cloud Intel, what I am doing, I'm generating all this intelligence, all this data, and I'm putting it on my cloud environment. So it can be consumed using API and it's all free and open. So if anyone wants to see the data, what I have, just go and use it. Uh, there is a, there is a demo key or if you want any key specific for you, like there is no rate limiting or nothing. Uh, I'm a security fellow, but I don't care about rate limiting because, because I feel like no one is going to abuse this thing. And when they will abuse, essentially, I think I can do, but this is something generated for the community and community can consume this. So that's the whole idea. So it's free, open, no need to share any information, just make an API call. So that's how I'm doing. Uh, mission and objective of Cloud Intel, so delivering consumable threat intelligence feed. And what I mean with consumable is like, it's not about just writing the blogs and just doing the telling, oh, I saw zero day, I saw this. It should be consumable, consumable in a way that whatever threat intelligence I am generating, it can be directly used within the corporate or within a company so that they can directly take those things and put it directly without having like, paying money without leaking their personal information or without uh, being like too much pain, like install this on your infrastructure or do this or do that. It should be like pure simple threat intelligence and it should be the user's idea how they want to consume it. So that's pretty much it, uh, my idea. So it, this is very specific to public clouds. Uh, I want to mention right now my infrastructure is only for the AWS cloud, but the idea is to extend that. And why that is, I'll, I'll go in detail later. And uh, key highlight and achievement and recognitions, not exactly recognitions, but yeah, uh, I'm proud of this, my, this project. So, so um, I want to share this. So essentially, uh, I got like 200 plus stars on this project, which is like, this is my first ever talk for Cloud Intel anywhere. So I have never tried to advertise, never tried to talk to anyone. And this just happened organically by default, like people started looking at this, recognizing the project, and they started doing stars, asking questions, and uh, yeah, this is on GitHub. Uh, so this is something what I found very interesting because this blog came out on 21st of November 2023 where Akamai says that they found a new botnet for Mirai, uh, which was spreading using zero day. And this is me tweeting the same thing after two days because it's just me 
I'm lazy. So after two days, I realized, oh, I had a zero day intelligence. Okay. No one else used that. But after getting this blog from Akamai, I did the retrospective analysis on my data set. And this is what I found. Uh, another thing, this happened on 30th of May. So today is 8th, I guess, 8th of June. So a few days back, they talk about red tail crypto miner. And this is the thing what I found in my key highlight. So you can see the same malware, the same payload was already available on Cloud Intel. So uh, if anyone have been using Cloud Intel, essentially they don't have to wait for anyone else, any third party blog to write or any vendor to publish anything. They can just go and fetch all this data and they already can incorporate this within their network. So that's the idea. Uh, the genesis of uh, Cloud Intel. So story, uh, as I mentioned, I started like uh, one year back and this is how I used to share the data points. This is like very vague, very vague. Uh, reason being, I had no idea what people are looking for or what I can deliver to the folks. So I just started with this and this is the current situation. So every day I'm pushing these uh, data points on GitHub uh, and for now, like after since 2024, I'm doing this like every day. So every day you can find new intelligence, new data points, uh, which is fed on GitHub. And uh, this is how it looks like right now. So this happened on 3rd, 3rd of June. So uh, essentially what I'm doing on GitHub, there are top five IPs, what I have seen, the malware, what I have seen, and uh, the exploits and uh, the, the code getting executed, all the malware behavior. That's what I'm sharing. So on the top, you can see the IP. Uh, on middle you section, you can see the malware. And bottom section, you can see the uh, exploits in this case. But yeah, this is not still not consumable. Because uh, no, one, no one wants to do this much of data processing before consuming these IPs. And it makes sense. So why I'm doing this? Uh, I'm sharing this on GitHub so that this is more like a teaser. So that if someone wants to see how the real data looks like. They can understand the crux jinx of this. And once they have the understanding, they can go to the API and from API, these instead of five IPs, I think I'm sharing all the data, which number varies. So 200, 250 IPs every day, uh, all the malicious uh, list, what I've seen in the past. Year. So yeah, uh, cool. So this is very dedicated to public uh, cloud. Uh, threat intelligence available, already mentioned. Attack surface, so uh, as I mentioned, the attack surface on the public cloud is a lot different than the traditional network. And that's why we need something specific to public cloud. TTPs, uh, TTPs, I hope all of you knows TTPs. If someone knows, then tricks, tactics, and practices. So essentially, when a malware come on your system, it does some funky things. And what kind of funky things it is? Like, it might be launching a PowerShell, or a bash and using PowerShell, they are doing CSS script and then CSS script, they are doing something and that would be TTP. So at the end, how malware is doing anything funky on the system, most of the time they do this to evade any forensics evidence or to evade antiviruses, EDR and those kind of things or logging. Uh, so those things are essentially known as TTPs, how the malware is behaving or a group how a group operates, for example, they, some groups use zero days, some group do uh, phishing attacks. So yeah, essentially all these are like part of TTPs. And uh, the last thing is logging and detection mechanisms are different. So in cloud environment, we have, I'm, I'm talking about AWS. So in cloud environment, we have CloudTrail logs. And cl how CloudTrail logs works, they have API calls. And in the logs, we get those API calls. So the detection mechanism using those API calls or those CloudTrail logs changes things a lot. And that's why we needed something very specific to the cloud. Cool. And I don't know why I'm saying this multiple times, but yeah, same thing again. Okay. So initial challenges and motivations. This is going to be interesting. So I mentioned why I am doing it only for AWS because of the cost. Uh, in the beginning of uh, my Cloud Intel project, I was spending like $500 every month uh, just to keep the infrastructure alive. And uh, being an individual, I'm not sponsored. It's not a company. I'm not making any money. So I'm funding everything by myself. And I just named this project as Cloud Intel. So I think $500 every month is relatively expensive thing. And, uh, and 
that's why I'm just right now limited only to AWS. Uh, I probably will move. So I'll not keep it constrained, but yeah, time, time is another thing. Like I mentioned, the data uh, pointers, what we get from within the cloud uh, Intel is, is a lot of data. And in previous slide, what I showed, the zero day was there sitting within my database, but I was not able to mine it because of the time constraint. And time is a thing which no one exactly can do anything about. Like it's gone, it's gone. You have limited time. So it's the worst kind of currency, I would say. It's it's not, a, you can't earn it. So that's the problem. Signal versus noise, essentially the same thing that we have a lot of IPs, but mining that one single exploit, what really matters is hard. It's, it's not an easy task. So that's the problem. And uh, the motivation was cloud specific attacks, real attacks and TTPs on the cloud. So I, I got a cool story about this. So I'll, I'll, I'll share later. Uh, cool. So key milestone. Uh, so initially what I did, I approached this, this project with the honeypots. And I, I believe everyone here probably know about honeypots. If not, then what honeypot is, it's like leaving your wallet on the, on the counter of pub after having a couple of drinks and then putting a camera there and waiting. If someone picks your wallet, that means that person is a thief. Maybe not. Maybe that person is not a thief and just trying to save you, but uh, that's how honeypot work. They, they deploy something intentionally malicious or intentionally vulnerable so that other folks can attack and then you will generate intelligence. Sounds like a good idea. Honeypot's been around since last at least 10 years. That's what I know. But yeah, it's been there for more longer time. And this is the honeypot teapot, one of the most famous honeypot. And this is from where I started. And the question is why? Okay. Why? <laughs> so because it's super easy to set up, there is too much support available for the honeypots. Beginner friendly. It's like kind of one click deployment kind of thing. Enough secure. Okay. Easy to manage. Yeah, if there is too much support available and people are, folks are de developing it since last 15 years, then yeah, it's easy to manage and does the job. So I deployed it and this is how my infrastructure look like. So from the same internet, the attacker and admin both were allowed to log in. Perfect architecture. It was running in a big EC2 instance and then I had multiple honeypots in there, all in Docker container. And then I had connected it with Elastic container so what it was doing, uh, it was internet facing, all the honeypots were getting attacks. It was checking all the uh, logs and streaming it to my elastic uh, container. And then I had written few scripts, which was mining this data every day. And if you see a line uh, at the bottom of this slide, so this is how it connects. It was a big image. I was not able, so I just chopped it. So uh, what it was doing, it was pushing the content to R2 bucket. Okay, interesting. What is R2 bucket? Uh, so I used to work for Cloudflare uh, and uh, R2 is S3 competition, kind of. Uh, so that's why I was using R2 bucket because I was way familiar with R2 than S3. But yeah, So and then uh, I had created an API uh, on top of it using Cloudflare workers. So the end user, what they were doing is making a API query to the workers and then in return workers was fetching the data from the R2 bucket uh, and that data was coming from this honeypot. Easy, right? Moment of realization. Honeypots specifically have a static configuration. Okay, what I mean with that? I'll show you. So if you look at this, this is a slash etc slash password file of honeypot of name uh, Kauri. And you will see a gentleman named Phil. And this person is very common in all the Kauri honeypot. Okay. Not biggie. But attackers also know this. So when they log in to a honeypot, they check slash etc slash password file and they know Phil is present. So it's a honeypot. I'll not drop my malware there. Why? Like it's, it's useless. Uh, no. Another thing, host name SVR04, which is very common. All right, for because this is a static. The CPU information is also static. Okay, 
So that means what I realized was the results were predictable and any attacker who comes on the system, they does run few commands and they figure out this is a honeypot and they just exit. I don't get the intelligence and the whole project is about intelligence. I want more. So easy to detect. All right. Attack chains are incomplete. They come, they log in, they run few things and they find and then they exit. Sad. And mostly scanners. More sad. Why? Because everyone knows about scanner, right? Uh, gray noise and so many intelligence, but yeah. So as a security researcher, what I should do? These are all static configurations, so I can change them. Yeah, that's what I did. Update timeout. Okay. In previous slide, I forgot to mention. So the way how honeypot work, they have a time ticking. So the moment someone logs in, maybe as a brute force attack, the time start ticking and they give you two minutes to five minutes, which is also a configurable time that a user can log in, be logged in, and then they kick them out. So this is what I did. I increased the timeout. Fix system settings. Okay. Uh, I changed the static files. All right. Added few more shell commands. Now, uh, honeypot is emulation. It's not exactly the system. And what I mean with it, uh, in emulation, we give the answer what they expect. For example, I don't know German language, but if someone tells me, anyone meets you say this word or Japanese language, someone meets and say Konichiwa and I can say Konichiwa, but I don't know what that means. I'm just saying Konichiwa, it might mean something, but exactly that's what it is doing. I don't know what the command is. It is just emulating, just throwing out the results. What is I'm saying? And after doing this, this was another second moment of truth. These kind of commands I started getting on my honeypot. This is very interesting because this was the next step. The moment I updated the static configurations, I started seeing new commands. But there is a lot going on here. Too many things. And if you look at this, what the attacker is trying to do, they are running all these commands some sensible, mostly non-sensible, just to get the behavior of the honeypot so that they can understand, are they still inside honeypot? And if a command which is not emulated, they will get alert and they'll say, okay, we know this is honeypot. All right. So issues, too many bicep passes. You can't, simply can't emulate each and every shell command. Super easy, still super easy to detect. Another problem, I'm working on cloud intelligence and only I can emulate the EC2 instance or compute instance using Honeypot. I can't emulate other cloud service. And there are like thousands of service available in cloud. So do I have to write everything? And, and at the end of the day, I was sitting on few extra commands but less attacks. And none of them were too sophisticated. It's like, blah. All right. So this is me coming with the honeypot and then let's bring the real thing. Okay. So what I decided, I'll move everything to the real system. And instead of using the honeypots, I will deploy the real EC2 instance. The question is, why? We can tailor it as per the need. And what I mean with tailor as per the need is uh, not all, uh, not all companies or all people use the same services within a cloud. And maybe some folks are just using the, just using the, uh, let's say lambdas. Some are just using S3 or some companies might be using EC2 compute with S3. And then there can be N number of configurations available. So, you can tailor it as per the need. Only generate intelligence what really matters to you. If you are interested in getting intelligence specific to bedrock, how people can exploit bedrock or what kind of attacks you can get on bedrock, then why not to just do the bedrock, right? No bypasses. Technically speaking, no bypasses. There can be bypasses, but uh, no bypasses in terms of like uh, honeypot as such. 
can use other services so you can create the whole infrastructure based upon one infra uh, based upon your requirement and you can get the full attack chain cool why you should not do this it's expensive like i thought uh, honeypots would be expensive but this is even more expensive because every single service you add you have to pay in my case aws hard to manage what i mean with hard to manage so the uh, aws works on on policies iam roles and everything and if in case i'm creating something like this and i end up doing some sort of misconfiguration i might be like i'm not joking might be sitting on 500 or 1000 or 1 million dollar bill within one day because attackers love cpu and the moment they get in they start crypto mining so super hard to manage easy to misconfigure can get complicated very easily so if i'm trying to add n number of services or four services then it's it's very complicated as compared uh, in comparison to the honey pots so this is the comparative analysis what i created cost less than real system high management is easy okay on honey pot uh, on real system it is hard complexity is relatively easy in real system it is hard so type of attacks are basic real system we can get sophisticated attacks shell we have to emulate everything it's the real box and new cloud services it's technically close to impossible in honey pots but yeah you have to manage the security configuration so the decision was very easy after all this i'll go with the real system and that's what i am using right now so this is the current architecture that's my attacker still the same now i have a ec2 instance and i have connected ec2 instance with the s3 bucket and my s3 bucket contains some information like garbage no customer because i don't have any such customer but it's all just dummy garbage data plus canaries uh i hope you folks know canaries but canaries is is kind of similar fashion how canaries were used during the mining period so the the moment someone use your data it will send you fire you an alert back say oh someone used just using this ip or this 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 information so I, i'll go this uh, why i'm doing this and all of this information is getting pushed to elastic if you see on left hand side you will see a lambda and what that lambda is doing it is revamping the whole system every 30 minutes why because if i'm spinning up a real system real ec2 instance and i'm not revamping so it could be possible that some apt hack this and start using this as cnc and maybe fbi come knocking my door your system is exploiting us i don't want that so use it as cnc but only for 30 minutes after that no sorry and uh, my lambda is written in a very good manner because i wrote that uh like <laughs> what it does is it changes the user id and password every 30 minutes it's still you can use root 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 password and those kind of easy to brute forceable user id and password combination but it changes it plus the good thing about lambda is if it revamps everything i get a new ip for free from ec2 so my ip is not gonna be block listed by any of the vendor so i'm hidden i'm golden there so th th this is the architecture what i come with and uh, in below it's still the same thing so easy to there is python code fetching the code putting to r2 same old thing but this is what i changed let's see what i have here okay so uh, i got a good uh, good story uh, against this so i'm um, what i did i tried to mimic this my infrastructure as hospital infrastructure so i created a random hospital name put my certificates in my ec2 instance just to test everything put some credit card canaries in my s3 and there was a very interesting attack what i saw the attacker came in they brute forced the password okay but the moment they came in they did check that there is a s3 bucket attached all right the next step is they will steal the data that's the most possible thing but they did not what they did they created their own s3 bucket they attached that s3 bucket to my ec2 instance 
and then they synced my S3 bucket with their S3 bucket. So why I'm telling you this story? Because this this is the key reason why what what I'm trying to emphasize since the very beginning that the threat landscape on cloud is a lot different than traditional threat landscape. In traditional sense, if it was me, I would have expected that attacker will come and come in. They will get the S3 data and they will exfiltrate it to certain domain. But no, you will not see it because they bring in a new S3 bucket and they attach it to the EC2 instance and then they sync both the S3 buckets, which was very amazing to me. And this was the point when I was like, it was the moment of realization and like they show in cartoon, the, the bulb shines, something like that. And that's what happened with me. And I realized, yes, th this thing is working. So benefits of current architecture, customizable with other services. I'm using only this thing right now because I'm cheap and I'm paying all by myself, but this can be customizable. You can add some extra services in there. This is what I'm working on. This is work in progress right now. So once we will add other services, we can see more interesting behavior of the attackers, not just related to EC2 instance, not just related with the S3 buckets, we can add other services in there and we can see how attackers are going there and exploiting other services. For example, SageMaker. So SageMaker consumes a lot of CPU and everything. So this is just a hypothesis. So I haven't seen this, but why not they go and misuse SageMaker for crypto mining? Is that even possible? I don't know. but. I'll never figure out until unless I'll put a SageMaker machine out in the wild so that someone else can go and exploit it. Or I can wait someone else to write a blog. But no fun in that. I'll put a SageMaker online. Yeah. So benefits of current architecture, customizable with other services, track adversary for every keystroke. Now you have the access of the system so you actually can see what exactly they typed. And you're not doing anything illegal when you are monitoring these attackers because these attackers are illegal. They shouldn't be there first. So if you're monitoring it, yes, do it. Uh, mimicking a behavior of big corporate. And what I mean with this, uh, when I when I put the certificates of the hospital, the same thing can be done, like the same architecture can be taken by any corporate and what they can do, they can mimic it. They can put their own certificates. They can put their own dummy data and they can monitor these infrastructure for new attacks, any, any advanced threats or anyone. So any scanning, you can remove those things. Anything known, you can remove those things. And at the end, when you will be sitting, when you will have like a clean set of data, you will be sitting on a intelligence, which is very specific to that company. And no risk of IP getting exports like honeypot because uh, honeypots are like a lot of times when you just do a nmap scan, you will get, uh, okay, this is potential honeypot. There are NAC scripts which will just tell you, okay, this is potential honeypot. So no such kind of risk. Isolated network for attack monitoring. Uh, and why I'm saying isolated? Because th this was, uh, this is what I have thought everyone would be worried about. So why you need to deploy this infrastructure within your account. You can create another account, a fake dummy account and deploy this over there instead of using your own account or your own corporate uh, to deploy it. So you can be isolated. No attacks can jump from that account to your account and you're golden, right? So data analysis, uh, this is what I did. So I have hosted uh, right now, uh, I got two services on there. SSH and Telnet service, these two services. Then I have a ADB service uh, sitting on my real system at the moment. And then I'm using Surikata for analyzing these attacks because I'm lazy and I don't want to spend too much time on analysis. So this is how it looks like. And it looks very bad on this big screen. I just realized. I apologize. Uh, but uh, try to make sense of this. Like uh, this is Asia and all the big attacks are coming from Asia. And here it is USA and on left hand side, you can see the uh, CN color of bubble, big bubble. And what exactly it means is uh, these, these, these connections from the US side, they were, most of these were security companies who were scanning the internet. Uh, I don't know why they have their own reasons, but uh, maybe Sension is the company name or similar kind of companies who maintain the, uh, 
sorry, someone mentioned relief. census. Yeah, so they maintain the database. Uh, so maybe like that. Same thing happened in, in UK as well. They're not malicious because I'm living in UK, so I'm keeping them under control. Uh, but yeah, so most of the attacks, what uh, we, we saw is uh, on the east side. This was not very interesting uh, in sense of big data set because uh, most of us probably already aware that Mirai botnet is still very hot and Mirai equivalent botnet and most of them are getting originated from Asian region. So yeah, this these bubbles explain it. Uh, this is still a bad image. I apologize. I did not realize how bad it is going to look on big screen but uh, this was for better understanding but it looks bad so I'll move ahead sorry about it so uh, th this is the this is the this is the port base so interestingly I found telnet based scanning was a lot more than SSH uh, because maybe people are still using telnet on the internet like me okay uh, this is interesting. These are all the usernames which were used for brute force. And some interesting thing what I see is like get slash HTTP slash 1.1 is the username. Someone is trying to brute force and I'm like, what? No. No. I was disappointed. But then I realized their botness was misconfigured. So they were trying to do some HTTP and I logged this. Okay. It's acceptable. Because except slash 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 is also there. All right. Uh, another thing, uh, these passwords what they tested for. Like uh, this is not any new information as such. Because uh, if you if you look at like rock me, you will find all of these things. Interestingly, it just points that so many misconfigured devices are still on the internet with their default username and passwords. Because if you look at here, uh, you will see that pi pi is still here. If you see. So people are still like have Raspberry Pis on internet with default user ID and password and that's potentially why these attackers are still doing these kind of brute force activity. All right. Uh, these are the top ASNs what I saw uh, and uh, no wonder uh, China is on the top. Okay. And interestingly you can see some digital ocean and Google cloud platforms also came up. So maybe use maliciously or could be could be scanners, their own scanners, who knows, uh, have to dive in. But yeah, th these are more like data points what I'm trying to share what we saw with Cloud Intel, right? This is an interesting one, command line input. I talked a lot about honeypots. So if you look at this line, this is not doing anything interesting. This is only to detect the honeypot because when attacker came in and they execute this command, they get false or true kind of thing and the moment they realize this is a honeypot. And that's why it is like one of the top command, uh, what I saw. And uh, maybe if you have used cowrie or teapot honeypot, you will see similar kind of window we get in there as well. Uh, because my current project is very highly inspired from there and I'm using a lot of their scripts and their dashboards for my aggregation because I'm... Um, so uh, this was the analysis of SSH and Telnet service. Now uh, ADB service. So ADB is, for those who don't know, is Android device ADB bridges and then I'll just put that on internet so that people can exploit with uh, their Android malwares. And not a lot, not as busy as SSH and Telnet, but this is what we see. Again, each is leading, always the leader, once a leader, always a leader. And this was the ASN, what we saw. And uh, <clears throat> so the things changes here. Uh, you can see miners, uh, some miners here. And in, in ADB, interesting thing what I found was they are not trying to, trying to evade any kind of detections. They are like more open. They are like, okay, everyone get a malware. You get a malware. You get a malware. <laughs> Just take my malware. Infect yourself. Uh, and I don't know how much they can actually make using a miner on mobile phone. Like, I'm no expert in this, but I think they're not making much. But yeah, I'm not there to judge them. Cool. So, Surikata hits. Similar, not expecting anything new. Uh, in Surikata, this is, these are the top ex uh, rules were getting hit. 
um, um, I was very interested that they still have double pulsar, uh, which is pretty old. I was expecting this to end, or maybe their rule is not so great. But yeah, the, the these are the hits what I saw in Surikata. And uh, these are the exploits what I saw. So uh, this is interesting. We are living in 2024 and we are still seeing 2006 exploits. Why? I don't know. Not just 2006, 2001 as well. But uh, yeah. So as as I mentioned, these kind of noise is a lot. The moment we put any such kind of data point on the internet and we have to filter these noise so that we can generate the intelligence and i'm not saying i'm not saying these things are useless it could be useful like i'm sure there are some corporate sitting somewhere in the world who still are vulnerable to cv 2021-0540 so maybe they need this but from an intelligence point of view it's not too solid and uh, this is interesting because I can see Stark Industries Solution Limited at the very bottom. I don't know what Stark is. Maybe Tony Stark. Jarvis. This is how they are pow powering Jarvis maybe. No idea. So, why this data is important? Uh, I have bored you folks enough with the data and all, but uh, I hope I can keep you some, I can bring back the interest. So why this is important? Because using this data set, uh, just by getting all this data set, a corporate or a company, what they can do, they can use these scanners directly in maybe they can block all this traffic from firewall. Uh, like I think last month there was a put related issue. So interestingly, I don't know how many of you folks know that even if you are not authorized to put, uh, or even if the bucket is not on internet, SC bucket, I'm talking about SC bucket, is not on internet, and someone knows the bucket name and they do a put request, it will fail, but you will still get charged for those put requests. Interesting. Thank you, Amazon. Uh, that's very good. So, maybe these kind of like attacks we'll see in near future where someone just do millions and millions of put requests just to pile your credit card bill and that would be like denial of credit card attack maybe who knows but yeah so that's why these kind of intelligence are important because these will be noisy but you have to protect your corporate so and another interesting story so what i did i created canary canary uh, keys access keys and i put it in the s3 bucket and i put it in the github accidentally committed it to github and it took less than 10 seconds for attackers to use those keys and uh, access the infrastructure i was lucky that it was canary so i just got an email that okay your canary being used by this ip but uh, think think it this way these are the same scanner ips if you have intelligence then essentially the moment these ips access your aws infrastructure you know potentially someone is in your infrastructure because these IPs are known for spray and pray kind of attacks. So, oh, I already mentioned this. Sorry about that. So mo mostly these spray and pray kind of attacks are used for crypto mining and uh, uh, leaks kind of. They What they do, these these folks just scan the internet and find the anything leaked. And the moment they find it, they try to spin up instances as fast as possible. And interestingly, uh, if if in legit manner you create multiple uh, instances uh, in your corporate in legit manner, uh, like instance one, instance two, instance three, then probably AWS will block it and they'll say, oh, maybe you are infected. That's how AWS works. So, uh, and because of these guys, these crypto miners, because they launch VMs or array of machines if they have privilege, in such a manner. So provided TTP is specific to cloud. So now uh, when I mentioned, I told you the story about the S3 bucket, getting a S3 bucket attached, it's, it's a good indicator. Why a different account bucket will get attached to your account. And this is something, a good TTP, which can be written as a rule and monitored uh, by the secure SOC team. Provided detection specific to cloud now these kind of uh, activity or logging uh, when you write a rule these will be very specific to cloud and interestingly uh, no 
no one is exactly monitoring. It's very specific to cloud. So these kind of TTPs logging can help strengthening the security posture of the company and more efficient in detecting man behind the keyboard attack. For those who don't know what man behind the keyboard attack is, in recent compromise, uh, most of the ransomware compromise, what attacker does, they get the credentials from some some place. It could be they have exploited something or it could be possible that they bought the credentials from someone in the underground. Once they have the initial foothold, after that they deploy a C2 and then there is a person really behind the keyboard who is typing each and everything and that's how they are moving and that's how they evade the attacks because, because it's a lot different than using a malware, right? And this is the kind of infrastructure which we can deploy and we can get such kind of attacks. Otherwise, it's very difficult to detect man behind the keyboard kind of attack. So improvement what I observed when I move away from honeypots to this infrastructure, malware drop increase. Previously, I was only getting the Mirai or such kind of botnets which do not care. We are like everyone gets the malware, but I started seeing more malwares in there. Old it was only these scanners. New architecture custom captured some custom malwares. So the the moment I mentioned how the attacker attached the S3, so uh, I started seeing the malwares which were not mentioned anywhere. But by the way, if anyone is interested in the malwares, just go to my Git repo and pull all the hashes. Everything is available over there. So I'm not talking about the analysis. So yeah, and full end-to-end -end attack. Now interesting thing. The moment they went to S3 bucket, they stole my credit card, they tested it. And what I got? An alert. So I saw that this IP attacked my infrastructure, they attached this S3 bucket, they stole the data, they used my credit card on this website using this IP and I don't know, I think this is very fascinating because you actually can see full end-to-end -end attack who is attacking, why attacking, what's stealing, where they are using and how they are using these. This will be like very amazing for me. Uh, so all of these were tracked using Kennedy tokens for me. So yeah, uh, more about the project. Uh, data is available free and open. Go and use it. Can be accessed using Cloud Intel API. Uh, important uh, things, what uh, important data points, I'm publishing it on GitHub. Uh, future Im Future implications, what I'm going to add is new services. That's what I mentioned. Expand to other public clouds. So right now it's only on AWS. Next, I'm thinking about Azure, if that is cheap. Uh, <laughs> next, I'm going to implement malware API. So right now I'm just sharing IPs, but the idea is to share the malware hashes using the API. Uh, endpoint commands. Uh, so endpoint commands doesn't like what they're executing. That should be shared using API. Full attack chains full exploit chains and all cloud logs. And last but not least, Windows OS. I'm very afraid of Windows. I use Windows, but I'm, I don't know how I will handle the Windows. So I'm keeping that for the very last. So yeah, uh, if someone wants to contribute, feel free because this is a free and open for the community by the community. So feel free, uh, go and any questions on GitHub, just do it. Uh, love, collaborate, do anything and share the ideas what you folks have with me and yeah. This is me for those, uh, ask the questions for those who are watching this record. I think this is recorded, right? So feel free to email me. Where's the camera? Feel free to email me if you have any questions. And yeah, this is me, Himanshu. So thanks a lot, everyone, for being here. And I'll open this conversation for the questions if you have any time for questions. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, we do have a couple minutes for some questions if anyone has any, uh, and then it is lunchtime. I have a few announcements just before that, but do we have any questions in the audience? We have here. Awesome. Hello. I would be curious on how you get the, uh, the uh, feedback from your Canary credit card data where it was used. Like uh, Okay. Yeah, so this is very interesting. The, when uh, when canaries are used, uh, they fire an email that, okay, this is used on this IPs. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I'm just getting the emails from it. I'm using the free service. Uh, I think it was Red Canary or Canary something. 
So, like I mentioned, I'm already spending a lot. I'm not spending on calories. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm trying to use as much free services as possible. And I think this is the way how a community driven project should be. Does that make sense? Cool. Great. Final chance for any further questions? If not, then I know you'll be sticking around today, right? So please find uh, him later around, grab a drink, say hi again. And so yeah, we are done for the morning, guys. Uh, it is now lunchtime. I believe that the lunch is already open, so that should be great when we go up. Um, for those looking for dinner and a show, we actually have in the main hall, uh, the Lock Picking Village have a live contest happening. So if you want to see guys trying to escape uh, through various means from, from handcuffs and other things, and they're going to win some prizes, you can watch and eat at the same time. Awesome. Food and drink available. And then we will come back again in roughly an hour for the afternoon session. So enjoy your food and have enjoyed break. Cheers. Thanks all.